She said she got kidnapped. She did. She was put in sex trafficking. So they were having other guys have sex with her as well? No, she was in sex trafficking. She tried against her will. Kept her in the room and... You didn't answer the question though. What are you doing for money right now? What am I doing for money? Sweet. Have you had to like sell yourself or do anything like that? It was kind of difficult having a conversation with her because of her mania and because of her mental illness. Yes. But um, but what what is it about her background that you think is, you know, a struggle or whatnot? Have you ever been diagnosed with any mental illness? Yes. Yes. What's the mental illness? I was diagnosed with. How old was he? In his 30s. In his 30s? How did you end up getting away? I escaped. Is your mom still alive? Yes. Yes? Where's she at? She's in Georgia. She Is she in the Atlanta area? Yeah? Oh, why don't you go live with her? What's up, YouTube? Guys, if you ever need to reach out to me, follow me on IG at, at Marcus the Interviewer. Now back to the content. What's up, YouTube? Atlanta Street Interviews, out here with another one. So we got a young lady with us today. How you doing today, miss? Blessed. All right, all right. Um, so are you homeless? Yes. Okay, and so how old are you? 18. 18? Yes. Wow, okay. Um, and so how long have you been homeless? About two years. Since you were 16? Mm -hmm. Okay, what was it that happened two years ago that caused you to become homeless? I lost contact with my dad. Wow. Is that who you was living with? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, how'd you lose contact with him? He moved. And you don't know where he moved to? No, but he took his dog with him. Wow. Um, so he didn't tell you where he was going, I'm assuming? No. No? Do you know his phone number? Nope. No? So what have you been doing for the last two years? I've been working, different jobs. Who have you been living with? Foundation. Um, I live with different people in the community. Like, we all work together. OK, OK. I would do landscaping, community service, chef work, different things. I get it. I get it. OK, um, so all right. So we'll put a pin in that real quick. Do you have any kids? No. No? Um, have you ever been married? No, okay. Let's just, let's start from the beginning. So, where are you from? Illinois. You're from Illinois, what part? Bloomington. You're from Bloomington, Illinois? <laughs> hey, man. Shout out that big Bloomington, Illinois, man. Shout it out. Shout out the whole state, man. All day. And so, growing up in Bloomington, did you have both mom and dad in the household? Um, temporarily. Temporarily. What age did you have them together up until what age were you when they split? Um, I don't know. Okay. Um, were you a young girl when they split? Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um. So okay. So bottom line is though you grew up in Bloomington. Um. Is your mom still alive? Yes. Yes. Where's she at? She's in Georgia. She, is she in the Atlanta area? Yeah? Oh, well, why don't you go live with her? She's fine. I'm sorry? She's fine. She's fine? Does she know that you're out here kind of, you know, homeless? Yes. Yes? And what are her thoughts on that? Um, okay, so you grew up in Bloomington. Uh, did you like go to school? Did you go to high school? Stuff like that? Yes. Yes? Okay. Um, growing up, would you say that you had like a fairly normal childhood? Yes. Yes? Okay. Um, did you do like extracurricular, like, act, uh, ugh, extracurricular activities like, you know, cheerleading, dance, anything like that? Mm, I did gymnastics. Did gymnastics? Okay. Okay. And so... It's okay, so, and you say you did go to high school, right? Did you graduate? No. 
No? I had a week left, and then my grandmother passed away. Your grandmother meaning your dad's mom or your mom's mom? My mom and mom. Your mom's mom? And so, I guess, did you know, you were close to your grandma. Um, did that affect you in any type of way when she passed? Because why did that cause you from, why did that prevent you from graduating? Sickness? Physical sickness or mental sickness? Both. Both? Have you ever been diagnosed with any mental illness? Yes. Yes? What's the mental illness? I was diagnosed with bipolar. Okay. Um, what age did that diagnosis occur? 18. So that just occurred this year? Mm -hmm. When do you turn 19? November. November? Mm -hmm. Okay, so you got a birthday coming up. Okay, okay. Okay, um, so I'm just gonna ask, right? Growing up, um, did anything like ever happen to you, you know? Um, well, I've gotten uh, in a fight before. I've uh, gotten into a fight? Okay. With a man. With a man? Mm -hmm. Why'd you get into a fight with a man? Because he was psychotic. Huh. What was y'all fighting about? I saw him um, hurt somebody. What did he do? He slapped him. And so because you saw him, that's why y'all got to fighting? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I'm gonna ask, right? Um, has any type of sexual assault ever happened to you or anything like that? Yes. Yes? What age did that occur? 18. This year? Mm-hmm. What happened? I got kidnapped. You got kidnapped? Yeah. That happened out here? Or did it happen in Illinois? It happened in Atlanta. In Atlanta? Mm -hmm. How long were you kidnapped for? I was kidnapped for... Uh, I don't know how long. Huh. And so what happened? Basically, when I met him, he said that I could live with him. Okay. You know, like to pay to live with him and things like that. And he just... He didn't want me out the house. So he didn't want you to leave the house? He kind of like kept you in the house? Yeah. Did he force you to do anything sexual or anything like that? Mm -hmm. That was the rape. That was, that, so that was what the pay was basically? So did he force you to have sex with just him or other people as well? Just him. Just him? Okay. What's up YouTube? Atlanta Street Interviews out here with another one. So we got my man out here today. How you doing today, man? I'm doing good, man. Hanging in there, hanging in there. All right, there. all right. Are you homeless? Yeah, I'm homeless right okay. now. All right. And so how old are you? 36. 36. And so how long have you been homeless? Not long. Probably like about a week now. About a week? About a week now. So what, what happened a week ago that caused you to become homeless? Yeah, I was staying with somebody. Um, I took somebody in. They ain't like it. Kick me out. <laughs> Kick her out. So is that the young lady behind us? Yeah, that's the young lady behind us. Okay. Me. So, um. And so you're 36, um, she's 18. So, you know, I was just interviewing her and whatnot. She's definitely a little cutie. Um, how'd y'all meet, man? At my job. Okay, so you uh, work at, at the Waffle House. Yeah, I was at Waffle House and she had just got out of the hospital and she came up and asked me for something to eat. She was hungry. And I okay. made her something to eat and brought her something to eat. And then I asked about her situation and she was just like, I'm homeless, I ain't got nowhere to go. And I was just like, I can't just leave that little girl out here like that in the street, not out here. Not downtown, you hear me? So it's just like, you know, I just made a commitment, man, to take a sacrifice. Okay, and so you was living, who was you staying with? I'm staying with a, um, somebody I was renting a room from. I was renting a room. So was it like a rooming house type deal? No, I was just a regular apartment. Okay, so you was renting a room in an apartment? And how much was you paying? 
150 a week. 150? Okay. <sighs> and so I guess bringing her in, they didn't. Why didn't they want you to bring her yeah, in? Yeah, because the girl was jealous. The girl had an obsession with me, and I ain't have no kind of, you know what I'm saying? No kind of dealings with her on any kind of sexual level. Did y'all ever deal? Period. Never. Never. Okay, how long did you stay there? About a month. I was there about a month before I got her. That we were there about four days, and then she kicked us out. So I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna ask, right? <laughs> I'm gonna ask. Uh, was it worth it? Yeah, it was worth it. Okay, because I mean, y'all are romantically no, I'm be, involved, I'm not right? Not gonna lie, bro. It was worth it. She is worth it. Okay, I can dig that, man. I can dig that. Are y'all romantically involved? Yeah, that's my girl. Okay, okay, yeah. so that's your lady. Okay, so you made the decision to say, hey, I'll just be homeless and it's all good. I mean, it's not It's not like every day. I, like, I strive, hustle. I try to do what I could do to make ends meet. I'm trying to hustle a room right now. I'm trying to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'll catch a day here, I'll catch a day there, but still, you know what I'm saying? When, when you don't get a room, where do y'all sleep? On the bench. Like, on the bench. Okay. And you were saying about some of her background, like, you know, it was kind of difficult having a conversation with her because of her mania and because of her mental illness. Yes. But um, but what what is it about her background that you think is, you know, a struggle or whatnot? I mean, as far as the mental health issues, as far as, you know what I'm saying, the depression and anxiety she deals with, with bipolar, I have to say the trauma too, you know, because she's been through a lot out here. That girl been through a lot out here. She said she got kidnapped. She did. She was put in sex trafficking. So they were having other guys have sex with her as well? No, she was in sex trafficking. She tried it against her will. Kept her in the room and yeah. It was having them come in and out. Does that affect her ability to connect with you sexually or she's real sheltered, bro, so I like, I just try my hardest to protect her as much as I can. You know what I'm saying? Until she can heal enough to where she can really be able to fend for herself. Type, you know what I'm saying? I get it. But she's hurt, bro. Like, like she, she's emotionally worked up. And so you say that you had did um, some years in prison? Yeah, I just did 17 years in prison. 17? Straight. They Jeez. Stay in Florida. So what'd you, what'd, you, uh, what'd you go to prison for? Carjacking, robbery, attempt. In what part of Florida? Bride County. Bride. <laughs> hey, man. Shout out to Bride County, man. So you was down there just being a terror, huh? Yeah. For real. <laughs> okay, For okay. Real. So let's just... So do you have any kids? Yeah, I got a son. How old? My son's 18. 18? Wow, wow. Um, so, I mean, I guess the whole time, pretty much, that he was growing up, you was in well, prison? No, I was in prison this whole time. You say what? The whole time, he, I was in prison. prison. When did you get out? I just got out, like, four months ago. I want to say almost four months ago now. Wow. Okay, wow. Okay, um, so okay, so you have a child, um, and so, you know, have you contacted him since you've gotten out? Yeah, of course, but you know, me, me and his family go through it, man, because there's so much, there's been so much bullshit while I was in prison, you know what I'm saying, with violence and shit. Violence, so they, what do you mean? Just, just, just period, like my history in prison, you know what I'm saying, with violence. What was going on in prison? I mean, shit, what? I mean, shit, couple stabbing cases. I mean, we're not in prisons. You tell yeah, us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I, I caught a couple stabbing cases in prison. So all the times I had to do on CM and shit, and, 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 and some of that shit, like, built for my people. And it built for her family. Because her family felt like, you know what I'm saying? I ain't no good. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to come out here and still be on the same bullshit. Have you? No. Nah, nah, I've, okay. nah, I've been doing good. Bro. I came out here and went straight for a job. I came out here with nobody. I came to the A with nobody. Okay. I, you know what I'm saying? I ain't have my hand out, no nothing. I just came by and gave some money. Got me a job. I left from out of Alpharetta. I came down to the city. And I've been down here. But I be in Greenbrier a lot too, though. You say Greensboro? No, no, Greenbrier. Greenbrier. Greenbrier? Greenbrier. <laughs> That's where I be at. That's where I be at. Okay, man. Shout out to you know the man? Southwest side, man. Southwest all right, so, okay, so, um, all right, have you ever been married? No, I no, Okay, been let's just start from the beginning. So, where you from, man? Bride County, Shout out man. that Hollywood, Bride man. County, man. Hollywood. Shout out that Hollywood, Florida, man. Hollywood, Florida, yes, man. sir. Shout it out. All right, man. So growing up in Hollywood, did you have both mom and dad in the household? No, no, no. I had my um. Really, I had my grandma. I had my mama too, but my mama smoked crack, so I just like really. So pretty much raised by grandma type deal. No, I was raised by the street. I've been okay. in the streets since legit. My grandma raised my other brothers and sisters. I've just been in the street. Were you the oldest brother? I'm the oldest. Okay. Um, as far as your dad, was he like pretty much not in your life, or 
Was he my sometimes dad, popping my, and out type deal? I, I, I ain't never met my dad. You never met him? No. And so, you know, one man to another, right? Now that you're 36 years old and you should, you know, have a little bit of hindsight, a little bit of wisdom, right? Yeah. What effect do you think that had on you? Prison? No. Um, your dad not being in your life and specifically you never yeah, you having know, that, met him. That plays a big part, you know, because then you look for guidance in the streets. You look for, you know what I'm saying? You look for guidance in, in different, you know what I'm saying, stereotypes. So I looked up to the street niggas, you know what I'm saying, as a father figure. I looked up to the niggas who got money. The niggas who had the city, you see what I'm saying? That's why I looked up to. That's why I wanted to be like. So I followed them same footsteps, you know what I'm saying? And shit, that's where it left me. Hmm. Uh, right in prison, 17 years. Hmm. Um, did you tell him that you didn't want to have sex, or did you agree to have sex? said no and he continued anyway mm -hmm. he said you have no choice how old was he in his 30s in his 30s how did you end up getting away i escaped i ran away where'd you run to i ran to the gas station locked myself in the bathroom in the gas station. I made sure I grabbed my essentials like hygiene, like hair, mm -hmm. things like that. Yeah. Grabbed um, warm things that covered my entire being. And I went off on my way. I called the cops. I made sure that it was a silent type of thing. Right. And um, did he get caught? Yes. He did? Mm -hmm. Did he go to jail? They told me they got him. They told you they got him? Mm -hmm. Huh. Huh. <sighs> okay. I'm sorry did that happen to you. How long ago did that happen? About a month ago. A month ago? And you don't know how long you was there for? <laughs> no. No? Huh. And so where are you sleeping at right now? I'm sleeping, um, I'm renting out a room. Okay, and so where are you, what are you doing for money? I'm working with my partner. Okay, that's the guy behind me? Mm -hmm. What are y'all doing? I come here for food and essentials that I need so that I don't have to pay for nothing. So and you don't I have to what? my mama for money. So. You ask your mom for money? How much is the room to rent every week? Fifty. Fifty? And do y'all rent it together or is it just you that rents it, that pays the rent? He rents it. So he's the one that rents it? And you I'm stay with him? <laughs> okay, how old is he? Because he said he did 17 years in the pen, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. how'd y'all meet each other? Waffle House. The Waffle House. <laughs> okay, okay, I get it, I get it. Okay, and so you didn't answer the question though. What are you doing for money right now? What am I doing for money? Have you had to like sell yourself or do anything like that? Have I had to sell myself? So just to let you know, right, on this channel, we hear we hear a lot of things. We hear that all the time. It's nothing that really shocks us on this channel. And it's nothing that you should necessarily be ashamed of because, you know, hey, it's survival of the fittest out here. Um, so has that happened before? <laughs> no comment. 
Okay, I get it. I mean, again, uh, there's nothing to be necessarily ashamed about or anything like that. We just kind of want to understand what's really happening out here on the streets. So that's why we asked to give the raw kind of truth and everything else. Um, it's not to embarrass anybody or anything like that. So I do want to ask about that, right? So some people are going to ask, like, I guess the laughter is part of the, is that part of the mental illness? Yes, I okay. have mania. Okay, so that's what that is. Okay, wow. See, we learn, we learn new stuff on this channel. And we see people out here on the streets, and we don't necessarily know what their story is. Um, if I asked your mom why you didn't live with her, what would she tell me? <laughs> you say what? Do you want to live with your mom? No. No? Why not? Because my mother, she is my goddess. She's your goddess? Mm -hmm. So why wouldn't you want to live with your goddess? So she can create more abundance for herself. Do you think that if when she comes across this video on YouTube, do you think that she's going to want to come out here and come get you? Or do you think that she'll maybe be embarrassed if somebody that she knows sees that her daughter's on here? I don't feel that she would be embarrassed of me. No, I don't mean embarrassed of you. I mean embarrassed of the fact that she's the parent and she's allowing you to be out here homeless. And you're still, you say you've been homeless for two years. Um. No? I feel like the foundation wasn't strong enough. Going on. I'm sorry I didn't hear that. Can you repeat that please? Foundation. The foundation wasn't strong enough for everything going on. You, you say the foundation of what? I'm, I can't hear. Can you speak up just a little bit? You have beautiful hair by the way. Thank you. Absolutely. So I guess we're just trying to figure out because honestly, right? Um, you're a young 18 year old. You're a beautiful girl. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely gorgeous. You say what? <laughs> These responses that you have, I'm sorry, they they kind of. But um, but yeah, you're a beautiful girl, and so people are gonna say, man, why is she out here? Why is she out here homeless? Mm -hmm. You know, and kind of you know messing around, you know, um, you know, living in a rooming house and stuff like that. Um, and so you say that your dad just picked up and moved away. Yeah. And so. How does that make you feel? Ooh, it makes me feel like I got God right next to me all the time. If your dad were to happen to come across this video on YouTube, do you have any message for him or anything like that? I mean, do you want him to reach out to you and, you know, anything like that? Yeah. You do want him to reach out to you? Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, well, listen, if anybody out there did want to reach out, help or donate, um, do you have a way that they could do that? Do you have social media, cash app, anything like that? No. No? You don't have cash app? What's your cash app? I don't have cash app. <laughs> you said you have cash app and you say you don't have cash app? Cash app is like more confusing because when I lost my card, mm -hmm. I couldn't get a new one. Right, but do, can you just have it to where it's on your phone or whatever? Can I have it to where it's on my phone? Yeah, like in other words, do you have a phone right now? Because it's underneath my name, my email, my number, my Well, listen, just, just just shout it out just in case you can get back in it because it's probably going to be a lot of people that watch this video. And that way, when they watch it, the Cash App is going to be up on the screen and they can donate to you. Um, I recently just talked to an interviewee 
that was donated over fifty thousand dollars over the uh, course of the months since she's done the interview. Well, so I would it, hope it, that I would have an opportunity to have help getting that. Well, I mean, shout your cash app out. That's what I'm saying. I don't have one. You don't have one? No. Whew. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, growing up, um, would you say that you had a fairly normal childhood? I mean, we grew up real poor and shit, man. But, I mean, I could say fair enough. I mean, I the wasn't abused. Tragic. As, yeah, I wasn't abused as a child or nothing. You feel me? So, I can't, you know. So, nothing like tragic ever happened or anything nah, like that? No, nah, no, nothing, okay. like, nothing like Did that. Did you end up going to high school? No, nah, I never made it to high school. I graduated fifth grade. I made it to sixth grade and I had got caught with a gun. So you made it to middle school basically? Yeah, I made it to middle school for three days. And then what happened? I got caught with a gun, I brought a gun to school. For what? No, nah, I just I just took my mama's um boyfriend gun to school. For what? I don't know. Oh shit involved in that shit to school. And I showed somebody and he went and told somebody and he told the teacher and that was it. Over with. So I was in the juvenile detention something. <laughs> You should have been a terror for a long time. No, yeah, you but I mean, that's, that's you know, yeah, the reason why we do these videos, right, is to understand how how these situations come about. You know, it's not like you're just a little terror just because you just came out. You're just like, hey, I'm just going to be a little terror. You know, you didn't have your dad in your life. Um, your mom was on crack. Um, is she still living? No, she got killed in 2013 when I was on solitary. Sorry to hear about that, man. Yeah, man, she was a good woman, man. She was a good woman. Anybody in my hood know my mom. You know what I'm saying? She was good people, man. How did that make you feel when it happened? I ain't gonna lie, bro. I was going through so much already. I've been down so long. That was 2013. I thought I was like 25 or 26 or something like that. I don't know. I couldn't take it lightly, bro. I mean, I tried to kill myself at first. You did? Yeah. After the second day, I found out. What'd you do? Cut. Sharpen the blade. Sharpen my knife as sharp as I can sharpen it. And I just I hit the shit. Yeah, every angle I can hit it till I reconstruct my vein everywhere they could go. I almost ain't make it, I almost died. Mm. Bust my artery, bust this, I bust this, I hit all, I hit every vein I can hit till that bitch just hurt. They mm. came and got me though. I, was, I, I died though. I, I really died. I went like three blood transfusions. I died though. What was your experience like having that near death experience? Bro, this is the craziest part, right? So I remember sitting on the bed. Okay, I remember when I cut, I was so mad. I had all my pictures out. And I cut the first time, boom. It was just so much blood, bro. And I'm just like, oh man, I hit him again, I hit him again. I just kept going down and hitting him. And I just don't remember anything. And I remember waking up, I see like, like the light, light, it's like a white light. I'm in a, um, they pushing me in a um, little thing, running me to think how to get The gurney? The, yeah, the gurney thing, run, rushing, I just got off the helicopter. And I looked up, bro, and this is all everything I love. The whole time, cause the whole time they shooting blood transfusions through me mm -hmm. while we going. I got lost so much blood, and I'm like, man, I look up, bro, and I just see that white light, bro. It's another white light. I say, man, I, that's when I prayed, bro. I asked God, I said, please, please just let me go with my mama, bro. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just want to see my mama. But, dog, like, that was the most spiritual, that was the most spiritual day I ever had, brother. That I tried to kill myself, bro. Because I feel like, you know what I'm saying? It was the guidance thing, like, like, literally, bro, I know I was right there. I died. They told me I died for two seconds. I flatlined for two seconds. Mm. Okay, okay. All right, man, and so here we are at this point, man, you know. Um, you know, what are we gonna do to try to get ourselves out of this position of homelessness? Well, grind, gotta grind, man, work. Like, I'm working now, I'm only getting two hours a day. I'm trying to find another job now, you know what I'm saying? But like, you gotta make it, bro just can't give up. You gotta have hope, bro. You gotta have faith. You ain't got none of those, bro. You ain't gonna succeed in anything. You don't got no stepping stone, nothing to stand on. You ain't got nothing to think with. You're gonna be a victim to these streets. I ain't gonna be a victim to these streets. You hear me? Man, I feel that, man. I feel I that. I refuse to be a victim. I might gotta sleep out of these streets sometimes, but I refuse to be a victim to these streets, you know? One foot in front of the other, man. One foot in front of the other, you know? So, yeah. all right, well, listen, man, on that note, 
if anybody out there wanted to reach out, help, or donate, do you have a way they could do that? Do you have social media, cash app, anything like that? I mean, they could, um, they could call my phone, man. I love talking to people. You hear me? Call your phone? No, that's on God. Y'all call me. Call you. You see right. this view? You view this video, man? Call me, man. All right, it might, might be a lot of views, man. Y'all input, man. Y'all input. It might be a lot of views, you ready? I don't even know right, well, social media today. What's the number, man? The number you know is 470 2182. Okay. okay. Y'all catch that breach, man. If y'all can help out, man, it'd be more than a blessing, man. All right, my brother. Well, listen, man, we really appreciate you. And we definitely wish you nothing but the best out here, all right? Already. Make sure you have a good one, man. Already, man. All right, all right.